Hi, tea timers. So Merry Christmas Eve. I am drinking a uh, Christmas tea, which is probably not a big surprise since it's a Christmas Eve. Of course I'm going to be. You can smell the, the clove and the cinnamon and the Christmas spices. A little bit of, feels like cranberry or orange. I can't remember what it is. I didn't read the back of the thing. So I'm going to answer a bunch of questions today. Oh, and I'm also wearing Christmas red. This, um, this was given to me by my daughter, Emily. And what I love about it is I've been making Christmas cookies, but when you make Christmas cookies, of course you've got to eat them because I don't have my family here to eat them. So um, I'm being valiant, but this you can eat as many as you like because it's got this extra layer that just wafts over gently and it's nice and soft. And I'm wearing little earrings. So that's, that's about, that's about my Christmas tree for you guys. Um, let's see. So I'll answer a bunch of questions. I also get to talk to my kids. I'm going to be zooming with them. We're doing a family Christmas zoom in just really, really soon. So that'll be really nice to see them all. And, and my daughter's fiance and my two boys wives and, um, you know, just chat with them while it's going to be nice. Not as nice as having them home, but I'm so grateful that last Christmas they all came home. So we have that, that memory of them all being here. It still feels like I can still feel them in the house. So, so, and how wonderful that we did last year, everybody get together, not knowing that we were going to have the year that we did. So that's been nice to think about. Okay. Um, let's see. As True Blue, 1992. Meg, do you have any personal favorite Christmas films, comedy or musical? P.S. You can still carry a tune. Well, <laughs> that's very kind of you. <laughs> that's very kind of you. Um, my tune carrying isn't quite as carryable as, you know, as it was when I was young. But I, I decided, you know what? Sing anyway. It makes the heart happy. So who cares if the voice is a little more wobbly or whatever? It doesn't matter. Am I going to not sing for the rest of my life because I've gotten older and my voice has gotten wobbly? No, I've decided <laughs> I'm going to sing anyway. Um, let's see, because, you know, that's just the way the life is. Oh, film. Okay. Uh, I think, you know, one of the ones that I really love, I mean, there's so many good Christmas films, but one of the films that I like to watch at Christmas, it isn't a Christmas film per se, but there's something about it that feels so Christmassy to me is, um, the movie Top Hat with Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, because it's black and white, but there's the beautiful costumes and there's parts that make you laugh that are funny. And it's just of an innocent, uh, like a, it, it felt like a more innocent time. Of course, you know, the war had gone on and everything, but there was just a, a, a it just makes me smile. And there's this, um, and the character Badini, he's so funny and the, the, um, his butler is very funny and, and then you've got the dancing and you've got the beautiful floaty costumes and um, so I really enjoy watching that. Now, Dawn perhaps doesn't enjoy watching it quite as much as I do because I like to watch it pretty much every Christmas um, and now it's kind of been like, okay, the first Christmas is he was, he was all up for it but now he's like, what again? So it's been a couple of years since I've watched it but if you haven't watched it, it's it's a really it's a really cozy kind of lighthearted thing to have playing. Mm -mm -mm. I had never watched Elf, if you can believe it. And I did it, um, I was missing, well, he was here last year, but the year before he wasn't, and he had recommended it. So when my kids recommend something, I generally try to watch it because it just makes me feel closer to them and, and it made me laugh as well. Okay, let's see. David a troop. Hello, Meg. Have you or would you ever consider turning um, your novels into movies or series for Lifetime or the Hallmark Channel? Now, I think I might have answered this before, but I'm not sure. So um, the, the short answer is if somebody wants to throw a bunch of money at me and wants to um, have an adaption of one of my books, sure, go ahead. <laughs> Happy to do it. But I think uh, because I've been an actress and because I've... Um, I've sold a bunch of screenplays to studios before. I know the process is maybe not quite as straightforward as writing a book. Like if you write a book and somebody purchases it, then you just, or they purchase the, you know, you send them the first bit of it, 
then you just keep writing it and you make it better and they give you notes and it makes it better and then you make it better and then eventually it becomes a book that people can buy and that people can read and that people can reread and it's in the libraries and that's really fun. Whereas a movie, you can do it. I'm, I'm sure I've talked about this before, but um, you, can, you can write it and then you rewrite it and then you rewrite it and it can never be seen. And um, so you put all this heart into it and, and you create these characters and they're never seen. And so you can feel a little like, oh, Sort of like how when I didn't get to do um, Constanza in Amadeus, you feel like you've given life to these people, this create, and and it didn't happen. I think it might it feels different. Like a couple of my books have been purchased, singing songs. MGMUA bought it, and then um, Porcupine Kit Row Company bought it, um, and, and wrote great screenplays, but uh, they weren't able to get it going. So. So sure, if somebody wants to, that's great. Um, I think these would make really fun films because they're, they've got all the different aspects, like they've got the action and the adventure and the love story and the, um, so I think they would, but I'm super happy for them just to be books, personally. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I told you I've got the Christmas earrings. Jen gave me these. Um, I might have said that already too. <laughs> okay, well, that's because I do these in the morning where I haven't quite woke up. Okay, um, Diana M. Meg, you are just lovely, and I so enjoy your videos. I've pre-ordered The Runaway Heiress. It's going to be something fun to look forward to. May you and Dawn have a lovely Christmas. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for, um, for doing the pre-order with Runaway Heiress. I really appreciate it, and it made me smile so big when I saw that on the, on the comments, so thank you. Um, the Office. What's the funniest moment you've ever had with your sisters, Becky and Jennifer? Also, Merry Christmas. I can't, I don't know the funniest moment because there's just, we, we just have funny moments. <laughs> but, but I think sometimes the moments that are the funniest to us wouldn't be funny to other people because, um, because usually the moments that would make us laugh with like belly hurting, cheek hurting, giddy glee, is sometimes are when we're talking about things in our past, which maybe might not be so funny or cozy to other people. But to us, it's just like, you know, somebody's doing something and you're like, oh, what a jerk, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, 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 and also us being like, yikes, run, <laughs> hide. <laughs> so, so I think we just laugh to, um, to break the tension. I do remember, um, I do remember once our mom we were a singing group. So we sang, we'd sing on the radio and we'd sing at church. And we had, um, we were gonna, mom, mom had, they had asked mother, cause she used to sing and then they asked her to put together a thing with her and with us kids, like a little, a little section. So um, we did, mother did a solo. We had a couple songs we sang and mama wanted us all to match, but we were really, really poor and it cost money to get matching outfits. And so our mom ordered from the Sears catalog nightgowns. <laughs> and we're like, mama, no, we, we can't stand up in front of people wearing nightgowns. She goes, oh, pish posh, nobody will even notice. She said, who's gonna be going? And I thought everybody who goes pouring through the Sears catalog is gonna notice the Christmas catalog, which goodness I did, because I remember I would, we would look through it, it would come and it would get dog-eared because we'd just go through it and all the, the candy sections because they used to have the candy in the thing and all the toys and all the beautiful clothes, none of which we could afford, but we we liked to daydream and go through it all and look at it all. And I remember once I felt very guilty because once I was looking through it with such longing and my mom came in and um, and I, I, I had been <laughs> She caught me crying <laughs> and she wanted to know what I was crying and I didn't want to say, I'm crying because there's all these beautiful things and I know I'll never ever be able to taste them or have them. I, I, don't, I don't think I told her exactly what, I, I, I'm not sure how I got out of that one, but I do remember feeling very guilty for this, this longing of uh, to have normal Christmas like other people with things. But you know, we would get interesting things for Christmas. We would get, we would get, you'd get to order, at, like ask for one present and hope that you get it. And so it might be things like, um, I remember one year my Christmas gift was a jar of pickles. 
dill pickles and the whole thing was mine. And another time with one of the prize ones was the whipped cream that you could in your mouth and fill up your mouth. One of those, like that would be, oh, that would be a fancy Christmas present. And, um, and I remember, uh, once my mom gave me a bottle of, uh, creme de cacao, I think I was 11 or 12. I can't remember. I was pretty young, but it made me feel very grown up and I'd take the lid of it and I'd pretend that that was a cup and I would half fill the lid with the creme de cacao and I'd just take little tiny sips of it and pretend I was a grown up. Um, I remember, oh, that's not a fun Christmas memory. I won't tell that one. That's a really sad one. Um, um, okay, so let's see, what everything. Oh, but oh oh I'll go back to the um the nightgowns. So mama said, no, we're going to we'll wear that. So we had to we were going and standing up in front of the whole community, and I just prayed that people hadn't been flipped through that page. And the whole time we sang, I was scared that somebody's gonna say, Hey, wait a minute, they're wearing pajamas. But luckily nobody did. And, um, but I still spent like, you know, afterwards when they had, um, you go around and mingle with everybody and they have cookies and you can eat them and you have to not be a pig, but you can eat a few of them and just kind of casually decide how many would be graceful. So, um, so yeah, even then I couldn't even get down my share of cookies because, um, I, I was worried somebody had noticed I was wearing pajamas. <laughs> now it wouldn't be a big deal at all. Everybody wears pajamas all the time, just walking around. Jen's, uh, Jen, Phil, you know, Jen's partner, he's always in pajamas. I'd say he wears pajama bottoms more often than not. And he started that trend because he was wearing pajama bottoms way before everybody else. You know, now, no big deal. But then I remember that was like, I was really, really shy about it. But you know, that was really smart of my mom. I remember once I was, um, she dropped me off to ballet and at the house where they were doing the ballet teaching, they were doing construction and it was big muddy thing. But my mom, she had a thing where she says, I'm leaving and if you aren't ready, then I'll leave without you. And she'd leave without you. She'd just drive off and leave without you. So I ran to the car. So sometimes you would grab the rest of your clothes and you'd run to the car and you'd hop in the car because you wouldn't want to be left behind. So I had done that because you know you get home from school, you get your ballet clothes, you get your this, you that. And I realized I'd grabbed everything in my ballet shoes and my tights and my lead, but I'd forgotten my shoes. Because <laughs> we all you didn't you only wear your shoes when you went out because you didn't want to wear out the soles and waste money. So I had, uh, I had forgotten my shoes and my mom said, no mind, you can wear mine. And I'm like, no, but you were going to go shopping. She goes, people don't look and see what they don't see. She said, I, I'm, I, nobody's going to notice if I walk like I've got them on. And this was winter, like kind of mucky, rainy winter. So she gave me her shoes and her feet were a uh, size and a half or two sizes bigger than mine. And so they were kind of floppy on my feet, but I felt so loved and I walked carefully over the thing, but one of the shoes got a little stuck in the mud and I had to be careful not to lose it because they were too big. And I went into ballet and when I came out, she said, I said, well, how did it go? And she goes, nobody even looked down. Now maybe they, maybe they pretended not to look down and maybe when mama sailed past like a queen, like I'm not wearing no shoes, they turned around and looked. Who knows? But she said, people see what you expect them to see. And, and I think that was her same philosophy with the nightgown. And, and I always think of that memory because, you know, of course, anybody who knows our childhood knows there's a lot of mixed memories. But that's a, a memory that I have of my mom that, that makes me feel, um, feel very warm and very loved. And I, I really appreciated that, that, that she did that. And I also really admire the, the woman that she is, that she's just like, I'm gonna walk around. And of course that again was many, many years ago where people weren't quite as free with their dress. I mean, my grandmother at that time was, you know, she'd still wear her hat with her little veil and her matching gloves and, and you know, her little matching outfits and so, and nylons and stuff. So people didn't do that. So anyway, um, I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. It's a little different, but we're, we're finding the joys where we can. And um, I'll see you all after Christmas. So have a wonderful week and, and um, it's getting cool now and lots of love.
Merry Christmas. Oh, oh, Christmas song. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Uh, those who don't like Christmas, just check out now. Um, okay. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas with every Christmas card I... Whoops! No, I forgot. Okay, sorry, sorry. False alarm. Let's start again, you guys. Um, uh, oh, yes, okay. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas just like the ones I used to know where the treetops glisten and children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas with every Christmas card I write. May your days be merry and bright and may all your Christmases be white. And then we'll finish with, this is Jen likes this one. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your friends. Good tidings for Christmas and a Happy New Year. You know, Becky would always love the part bringing up the figgy pudding, that one, but I won't go into that because it's too long singing for you guys. <laughs> so Merry Christmas and uh, lots of love to all of you. Bye-bye.